Hi, I'm David. I own and operate Country Whatnot Gardens here outside of Rochester, Indiana, which is about an hour south of the Michigan State Line. I grow 25 different species and varieties of bamboo. This is Japanese arrow bamboo, Pseudosasa japonica, and it's been inside in unheated storage this, this winter. That's just why it's still green and looking lush and pretty, whereas the Pseudosasa japonica that this came off of, the main clump, is actually windburnt and top killed, I'm sure, <laughs> out in the garden. But I'm discussing here today how to make soil for bamboo if you want to grow it as, I would say, bonsai. You can't really do bonsai with bamboo. Let's call it um, pinjing, I think would be more accurate. Bamboo is more suited to pinjing, which is Chinese tray landscape. This is ground up bark, which came from these bark nuggets that I got from Lowe's. Now you can take bark nuggets like this and take an old meat grinder and put it in there. And I like to actually run it backwards a little bit first, which kind of helps to pulverize it a little bit before you run it forwards out the front of the grinder. Um, it does turn pretty easy. It's not bad. This pulverizes it. You don't pulverize it too much, but then you run it out the front like this. You can see it starting to crumble out the front of the grinder there. Then what you end up with is this. Now, you don't want fines, uh, this powder here. You don't want this in your growing medium because this will interfere with drainage and you want it very well drained and not compacting. This will also make your soil mix, our soilless medium technically, compact and you don't want that. So I have here, this is a sieve, especially for sifting bonsai soil. And you're gonna dump your contents. You can see that cloud dust just went that way. You can sift it like this. And then what you're left with are these mini bark nuggets like that. I'm just gonna dump them into the bucket there that I've been dumping my sifted ones into. Now, this powder here, we're gonna utilize this, this bark uh, mix 100%. This is not waste. This is very similar to peat moss. You can mix this into your soil for woodland plants that don't require a lot of nitrogen because as wood breaks down, it tends to rob your soil of nitrogen. So you don't want to give this to any nitrogen loving plants. But as far as woodland plants, um, jack in the pulpits, trillium, um, what's some other things that would grow out there? Maybe, maybe some hepaticas, different things like that that don't really want nitrogen. You could mix this into soil and make a nice woodland type soil in the ground, not in a pot. In a pot, this will cause problems. This will cause drainage issues. It will cause compaction for roots. You don't want fines like this in your, in your pot. Now, when you unpot this Pseudosasa japonica out of its field soil, you'd take the field soil off of the roots. You would do this in the wintertime when the plant is dormant. And you would then use this uh, fine bark nuggets here and pot it in this, maybe mix it with some um, baked of high fired clay like uh, akadama or turfus or even granite chicken grit would work. Mix it, um, I would say, I would say at least two thirds bark and one third uh, inorganics like your, your granite grit or your akadama or your turfus. And I've got an example over here of another plant that likes this bark mix. This is an aspidistra. This is a beautifully variegated aspidistra called snowcap. You can see it's potted in this terracotta pot so that the roots can breathe. And it's potted actually in these mini sifted dust, dust sifted <laughs> to get the dust out, bark nuggets. And it enjoys that. Now, aspidistra is a plant that you can grow with bamboo, and it looks great. Of course, in the north here in zone 5B, you have to take it in in the winter. But down south, zones say 7B to 8 and south, this will actually grow well with your larger bamboo in the dry shade. Japanese gardens use aspidistra quite a bit, especially in conjunction with bamboo because it's a good leaf contrast. You get the broad, broad large leaves of the aspidistra combined with the smaller leaves that you typically find on the larger timber species of bamboo. And it grows well in the dry shade with the timber bamboo. But I want to do a video uh, coming up soon on how to prepare uh, pseudosasa japonica. 
as a, a pinging a tray landscape. And I thought first I would show how to grind these bark nuggets and make a suitable growing medium from them. Because it, it, you can get these meat grinders, these old meat grinders on eBay, fairly reasonably priced. They're not expensive. Um, you just have to watch that they come with a, a coarse attachment. You don't want the super fine attachment because they'll pulverize your bark too fine, such as, um, such as these. These would pulverize your bark too fine. You can see the one that's on here only has three three parts that spin around and chop that off and um, you don't want you don't want anything uh, finer than that like like these these would these would be way too fine and they would just pulverize your bark into nothing and you'd have only dust and no usable uh, larger sized pieces for your soilless medium that you're making so that has been a look at preparing <laughs> a soilless medium, and yet another way to grow bamboo. If you can't grow bamboo outdoors, you can take a bamboo that does well in pots, such as Pseudosausage japonica, any of the Pleoblastus, um, what's some other ones, Hibano bambusa, and grow them either in pots in, indoors, as just regular potted plants, or you can arrange them beautifully in a tray landscape, like I want to show coming up one of these days, <laughs> as a tray, Chinese tray landscape called pinching. So that has been a look at another way to grow bamboo, and I appreciate you stopping by. If you liked the video, please give me a like, subscribe, and share. I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, please take care, and thank you for joining me. Bye.